the good thing about it is that now the Jets are positioned to get Trevor Lawrence officially now. Because we all won. thought we all thought that the Jets were the worst team in football. They just weren't officially the worst team in football. <laughs> but now we're gonna give our tanking for Trevor updated rankings. <laughs> so it's weird because the Jets are 0 and 6. They're the only team that has not won a game yet. But there are one, two, three, four. There are five teams that have the same record that are one and five. Washington's one and five. The Giants are one and five. Jaguars are one and five. Falcons are one and five. And the Vikings are one and five. And Chargers and Miami also have one win each, but only four losses. And that pick is actually from Houston. Miami's pick is from Houston. So they have their pick in Houston? Yeah. <sighs> wow. Miami's done a really nice job rebuilding. Yeah. On a side note. Yeah, yeah they, they that's what you call the a good rebuild. And even when they don't have talent, they try to win games. They got a great coach. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't, they no. got a great coach. I think that Brian Flores has ascended into the great, great, like a great coach level. Like, I think it's fair to call him a great uh, a great uh, coach of this one. Even though they haven't had the success to back it up, I think it's fair to call him a great coach. I definitely think for their expectations coming into the season and last year, He's definitely exceeded them. They fight every week. Because they were they were people said they were tanking last year, tanking for Tua. And even though they didn't get they didn't get a number one pick, they still got Tua because of his injury. Right. And they competed. But I don't know if I call him a great coach yet. I think he's a really good coach and he's setting a good culture there. He's ascending. But we have to see still. Yeah. We have win. to see still. I I just I think that in the Trevor in the Trevor Lawrence race, I don't think anybody can touch the Jets. They're hor- they are actually the worst football team I've ever watched. No, I, I think so as well. <laughs> I think the the Jets are really bad. And look, th- these are their next six games: the Bills, the Chiefs, the Patriots, the Chargers, Dolphins, and the Raiders. So there's a possibility they go zero and twelve here. What if you steal one against the Dolphins? Because I'm looking at the Giants' next six games. They got Philly, Bucks, Washington, Philly again, Bengals, Seattle. So The thing is, I know the Jets are a really bad team, and Adam Gase is the worst coach in the NFL, but I don't even think with the with the new coach mm-hmm. we'd win. No. The, roster, the team is, the team is There's horrible. There's no talent. There's no talent at all it, on this It's roster. just Sam Darnold and a bunch of guys. And, like, you look at the Giants – and I feel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the Giants have at least been in competitive in all of their games except for the 49ers. The 49ers was a blowout, and that was the last time you really saw the 49ers pseudo healthy. Other than that, they've been in every game. Even Pittsburgh week one, they only they almost lost won. by 10. They yeah. almost beat Dallas. Chicago was a great <clears throat> game without Saquon Barkley. The Rams, they had them. On the ropes, I guess you could say. They almost beat Dallas last week. And then they beat Washington, who has also competed in what seems like every game. So it sounds like the only team that really just can't compete is you guys. And it's been like there has not been a game that they've been in, I feel like. I mean, you could make an argument. Week one, they were kind of in the game in the second half. But even when they were in the game still. You knew you were going to lose. Exactly. There was no feeling of doubt. Wait, versus the Bills? Yeah. Week I didn't one. honestly, bro. Stop. I didn't think the Jets had a chance in that game. Oh, oh. no, 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 I no. You were no, no, no. Say, even even watching it, I agree. I know the score looked closer, but no, that's what I we thought say. it was a yeah. blowout. Yeah, you're saying there's never a chance where you looked at the Jets game, you said, "No, nah, we can win this game." And the Giants, like I'm talking about the Giants right now, because I feel like they're the only team that's close to the Jets. You think Washington isn't? Because the they're currently with, with the second. They have the second overall pick. The thing with Washington is. I feel like they're in more disarray than the Giants right now because I was going to say the Giants have a lot of stuff going for them. I think that Joe Judge has done a really nice job, like we mentioned, how the Dolphins did, building a culture. Even if the results aren't showing it, I feel like he's building something good there. The players seem to like him. Daniel Jones, although he's on and off, he can show you some really solid moments. And they have a nice offense when they can stay healthy. But the problem is health. They can't stay healthy. You never know who's going to be out there on any given week. Their defense is a whole other story, but I feel like the Giants have bright spots. I have not seen that from the Jets at all this season. People are talking about Trevor Lawrence sitting out or asking for a trade. Did you see him play last week? Um, was that mean, last this oh weekend? Oh, my God. Yeah. 
he had, I didn't he see had, him play, but I, I saw his He had 400 stats. yards Yo. and five touchdowns at half. Like, you had to watch. Like, it was just like, like, it was cra- like he's different. Like, it was the, crazy. The thing about it is that I don't think that Trevor Lawrence asks for a trade or goes back to college just because it just have the number one overall pick. Especially if any team that he goes to in the top of the draft is going to be bad, regardless. Yeah, and and Dabo Sweeney even mentioned at his press conference, I think it was last week, that he's ready to do these things in New York. So I'm sure that's a conversation they've had. Yeah, between the two and teams. I'm sure he wouldn't be saying something like that <clears throat> if him and Trevor Lawrence didn't have that conversation and kind of know this is it. Like, I'm sure if there was any doubt, he wouldn't make a comment I think like he that knew for a while ago, yeah. though. Like, this, yeah. this was it, his junior year. He wasn't going to come back for his senior season. So I think... He and, knows he knows who yeah. he's going to go to. And at the end of the day, you know, it's very easy to sit on your couch and say, oh, the Jets are terrible. He should stay back in college. But when you're in that situation and you're in college making nothing, literally zero, you're not allowed to make money. Think about it, though. Even if he does stay back, there's a possibility that you guys do the same thing you did the next exactly. season and still exactly. be able to get him. So. Exactly. And it's looking like it's inevitable for him to go to the Jets. If not the Jets, probably maybe the Giants, maybe Washington. One of those three teams, though. And everybody brings up Eli as the situation. Oh, you never know. He might stay back. But that is the biggest exception from the rule. John Elway did it, too. You know, like it doesn't happen. I think the, the that, thing that, about that's it, two guys out of how many people over the course of the Somebody actually explain the Eli situation. He didn't want to go to San Diego. Um, so he said he's literally not going to play for them, and they ended up trading him for Philip Rivers. True. Yeah. yeah, and that's why Rivers is on the. He was on the Chargers, and Eli oh. went to the Giants. But that situation could only happen if you have two of the top quarterbacks, and yeah. people are willing to trade a lot. Because the Broncos traded a lot for John Elway, because John Elway refused to play for the Colts back in like 1986, I think he was supposed to be the first overall pick, and he refused to play for them. But regardless. If a team is drafting one and they draft you, they own you. They right. basically have your rights. The fact that you can sit there and say, I don't want to play for this team is ridiculous. I just can't picture a world where he turns down the number one overall pick. Look at Tua. A situation where in one year, Tua went from being the greatest NFL prospect of all time to eventually he became the, the fifth overall pick. But when he had that hip injury... Nobody knew what was going to happen. Nobody knew if he was going to be able to come back and play football. So that is a huge risk to go back and play college football for free again for a whole other year, not knowing what might happen to you in that season. I'm a Jets fan, so of course I want Trevor Lawrence to go to the team. But I look at these options, and I like him in Washington better. I like And actually the teams that are that are bad but are good, like the Falcons and the, and the Vikings, the Vikings in a year, I think, or a year or two, they're going to be out of under Kirk Cousins' contract. If they can hopefully land a number one pick or even the Falcons, that would be huge. Yeah, and I'm sure Trevor Lawrence has his fingers crossed open for that to happen because you look at both of those situations are so much better. Just mm-hmm. head coach alone, you have two proven guys there in... Uh, Dan Quinn in, got in, fired. In, oh, I was thinking Vikings and... Washington was oh, okay, what I was yeah. thinking. Ron Rivera. I would love to play for Ron Rivera. I think that, he's a great coach. I think that Atlanta one was good walking in, and the first guy you get to see in there is Matt Ryan, learning under him. That That's looking like the best situation. And then you have Julio, who still has it. Calvin and Ridley. Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I, I just hope that Trevor Lawrence to the Jets, I hope the Jets don't ruin him. Because <laughs> the way this is yeah. trending, is it looks really bad, especially well, what they did to Sam Darnold. I think that the most important thing, uh, even more important than getting the first overall pick, because even if you don't get Trevor Lawrence, there's other quarterbacks to be had out there. Even if you stick with Sam Darnold, the most important move of the offseason, be, because Adam Gase will not be around next year. I think that's written in stone at this point, is hitting on a head coach. And it was it's so important two years ago, we failed, and... We went from what could have been a, a ten and six playoff team last year to seven and nine and out of the playoffs, and now the worst team in maybe a, a decade in the NFL, and that's being generous. I was Beca- just about to say that because we failed on the head coaching pick. So I think you got to really 
th- this is going to be the move for Joe Douglas. And I know you're already low on him, and I, I have seen a lot of Jet fans turning sour towards him, which is understandable. And I think he knew that was coming. It is. But this head coaching pick will be his chance to turn around the perception on him. If he can get a guy like just throwing out a couple of names that have become coaches in the past few years, Cliff Kingsbury, so somebody like that that you know has had so much success, Matt Rule, who looks like he's doing a pretty good job down in Carolina, Sean McVay, Matt Nagy, so many good coaches that have come into the league the past few years into head coaching roles. If he could find somebody like that, if he could get a guy like Eric Bieniemy from Kansas City, who's helped run one of the most prolific offenses in football history, that can be the difference maker in turning around the next half a decade where he's under contract. You'd have five years of Trevor Lawrence under a rookie deal. That could be the move that changes everything. I just finished watching Moneyball today. The movie? Great. Yeah. That's a great. Yo, you just did like, this is the first time watching it? Yeah, it is actually. Wow. And after after seeing what Billy Bean did You're crazy. with the athletics, then I might have some hope. Maybe Joe Douglas has that type of situation. I don't know, though. I'm I, I'm not sold on Joe Douglas. I don't, I I hope, don't blame you for I not hope, being sold on it. I'm not about to go back into this guy. I hope he proves me different. I don't blame you for not being sold on him, but I would say at least give him until the coaching hire. And if he fails on the coaching hire... Then I'll concede. Look, man, the first thing he needs to do is convince ownership that we have to get new uniforms. Wow. Yeah, those oh, uniforms oh, are terrible. I like the uniforms. The green ones? I think uh, the helmets nah, are beautiful. I, I think the uniforms are really nah, ugly. I, I think you're... Uh, I if, think if, if, if we were winning, you probably I would not be no, saying No, I'm dead thing. serious. I can't believe this is your first time watching Moneyball. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Do you remember... Do you remember... Uh, That's a Brad Pitt classic. When the though. uniforms... When the uniforms leaked online and everybody were make, was making fun of on them on Twitter, we were destroying yeah. them. And every Jets fan thought, "Oh, this can't be the uniforms. This <laughs> can't be it. Oh, this is a lie." Like how Jamal Adams made a promo for that for that for the uniforms in a commercial where he's like opening up a box and then he's like, "Oh my god!" Like you know, I, on, I don't mind them. I think suck. I think the helmets are beautiful, and I think that well, listen, I would, I would I would I would watch them in. Garbage bags if they were going 10 and 6 every season. I think this era for the Jets is the same era that the Bucks went through when they had the orange Ooh. uniforms. Oh, those? The creamsicles? Those are great. But they were horrible with them, though. And at the time, everybody thought they were ugly. And now look at them. Now everybody wants them back. Yeah, I guess it goes in full circle. But that's a tr- tanking for Trevor rankings right now. Go Jets. I mean, I think... I don't even think... I we like Washington. Do- I really do like Washington. I don't even think we need to do another segment for this because I feel like six weeks from now, the Jets the are still going to be at yeah. the first pick. They might not have a win by then. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I think they're going 0-12. If I was a betting man, I if I was a betting man, I would say I would rather bet money on them going 0-16 than winning a game. If Any was, game. If I was one of those guys that put big money, I'd put the big money in the Jets. Getting Trevor Lawrence. That'd be Honey K. Jets. And I'm sure Vegas has a line on that, and I would bet it would say the same They have a line on everything. And Vegas never loses. 